bad. They can't see the floor. See, they can't see the, what is it? Like, Forks or something? I think those are Cheerios all over the floor. Yeah, no, it's fine. Mine's yeah. usually popcorn. That's why I don't give my kids popcorn. <laughs> this, is, this is me with popcorn. I'm like, well, the house is already messy. So yeah, you can have popcorn. <laughs> I have to vacuum anyway. It will sit clean in a basket for yeah. years. Yeah. <laughs> or until like, we'll be get digging it. through it. And then yeah. you're like, then you come to the point where you're like, do I rewash it? Yeah, or like, why do I even have dressers? <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I have my best friend Lexi here and I wasn't really planning to do this. We weren't really planning to do this together, but she ended up coming earlier and I didn't get a chance to film this question and answer yesterday where she does a lot of things that you guys ask questions about that she would have answers to and maybe they would be different than mine so i think it would be really good to get opinions on both sides but i asked you guys on instagram if you had any questions about kind of like homemaking and mothering and like diy kind of stuff so i'm going to read some of the questions i hope this video is not four hours long i was going to say she didn't prep me with any of the questions yeah i didn't really so. look at them either i mean i scanned over them but okay yeah i okay, don't really cool. know them either and if you guys are not familiar lexi has her own channel i will link that below um and i know like every time we're together people are usually commenting like we love seeing you guys together <laughs> we, love, we love seeing each other together we do. too we do Just i love seeing you seven hours apart which like we talk uh, i would say like most days or at least every yes. other day yes um but yeah so anyways <laughs> hi guys <laughs> so i'm lexi i live in north carolina um me and addy grew up together um i'm a mom of two we're soulmates we are soulmates. I keep trying families. to convince her to come down and live with me. <laughs> She's not quite there yet. I'm going to work on her husband today. So <laughs> This is a good question to start off with. Yeah, Lexi does a lot of like DIY stuff too. So this, that's why mm -hmm. this, these will be perfect. What was your favorite project you've done in 2019? 2019. Okay. Like this year, like in the last, what, six months. I have, I don't have very many completed. I have so many started. You know, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> I was like, one that I've finished. Mm. Yeah, I know. Even though I didn't technically do it, the thing that probably was the most satisfying was getting the bathroom upstairs done, like mm. the floor. This is how I am with projects. I get started and it's fun and then halfway through I'm like, why? <laughs> Why Sanding. did I decide to do this? And I have to finish it. You know, yeah. I can't just leave it. But I think the most fun and the biggest transformation was painting my backsplash. Mm -hmm. um, for those of you that don't know, it's not I was actually. I for that. Do you remember? Yeah. yeah she's, yeah. she is hilarious because so many of my projects that I've been in the middle of, she's arrived in the middle of them. Yes. Like she helped me put some floor in upstairs, <laughs> all yeah. that good stuff. Um, but I think the most, like the biggest difference I've seen was painting the cabinets white and then painting the backsplash on. It just looked a lot different. And I have a video on that. This year, 2019, I would say Why? my <laughs> favorite project. If you guys don't watch my channel, um, we moved into a very, like a fixer upper house and we're just renting it right now, but with the intention to buy it. Um, I wanted to rent it for a year to make sure it was going to be worth buying because it might have some issues that are not worth buying, but I think we are, so I've started to kind of renovate some things. So my favorite one would either be painting, moving the dining room into a room that was not supposed to be a dining room and painting it navy blue. It's a big like front room and now it's like my favorite room. And it looks amazing. Yeah. You guys should check out her channel to see it. It looks so good. Yeah, and I'm gonna be doing something to the tile in the next little bit here. So if you have ugly tile and you wanna <laughs> spruce it up, yeah. Tune in. And then my other favorite project, I had these like really ugly sconces over my um, sink. And they were like super big and weird and I got this idea that if I could turn them over, spray paint them and put Edison bulbs in them, I've got kind of like a modern farmhouse but industrial style. Yeah. It's very um, similar to mine but I think hers has a bigger classic. Or is yes. that the right word? Classy. Classy, yeah, yeah. Yeah. A little bit more, so. So I put that in the Edison bulbs and they look so good. I actually haven't even revealed them yet. I have to go home and do that, so. What's the hardest home project you've done? And then what's the biggest oops you've ever done? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so 
the hardest, I would say that it was a tie between the backsplash and the flooring. Because I did almost all the flooring by myself. Yes. And it was like, I was pushing furniture out of the way and ripping up carpet and all of that. And I think I wanted it to be done faster than what was happening mm -hmm. and that irritated me. And then the tediousness of doing this backsplash was... I w I'll never do that again. I don't know. I'll never. I'll never paint backsplash. It was fun, and I loved doing it at the time. But like, I would just rather buy a wallpaper or something. Hardest DIY I ever did. I had this buffet. I actually don't even have it anymore. But I bought it and I stripped the veneer off of it. So that was super difficult. The payoff, amazing. But that project took me like months because I get so sick of it and I'd be like okay I can't do this anymore but after it was gone it was beautiful and the piece was beautiful it and was actually it. I sold it for I think I bought it for 50 bucks and I sold it for 500 nice and you know somebody, that it was worth it yeah but I mean I put the hours there people yeah. put the hours into that one <laughs> the biggest oops for me um is probably the playroom floor because mm. I, which it wasn't really my fault, but I laid a piece of the flooring wrong. And now you guys are probably going to look for it. And <laughs> but I laid a piece of the flooring wrong. And with that flooring, when you start messing up in one spot, it just kind of like the gaps continue. Yeah. And it, my dad said he actually, looking at it, he thinks that it was a piece of the flooring that like one of the pieces was bent a little bit or something. Uh. And then ripple effect through it. So... That was probably my biggest oops. I've had a lot, but. One time I tiled a bathroom wrong and had to rip it all out. <laughs> oh, you, you win. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Always use a level, <laughs> Always use a level. <laughs> when you paint furniture with a brush, how do you make it look smooth? And my number one tip is get an expensive brush. Um, yes. Like, I think people might think that paintbrushes are all the same, and this was something my mom taught me, like, right off the bat when I started painting stuff, is, like, buy, buy the more expensive brush. The reason being is, like, they're a finer, right? Mm -hmm. They be more fine, and when you put paint on, it makes it look less streaky. The, the cheaper the brush, the less bristles it has. The more and she's the less look streaky. Synthetic, like, synthetic bristles compared to natural bristles. Mm -hmm. But my other tip is be... Whenever you're not using your brush, don't just set it out in the open. Put it in a plastic bag mm -hmm. so that it preserves it. And if you accidentally do, like the other day, I fell asleep because my kids were exhausting me, left my paintbrush out, and it got all mm -hmm. crappy. Mm -hmm. I put it in a cup of Coke. Like, really? Soda. Ate it all off in 15 minutes. I brushed okay. it off with an old toothbrush. And then it's like brand new again. It works really good. I'll have to try that. That's a really good tip. What takes a room from okay to finished? What touches make mm. the, st the most stylish impact? That's such a good question. I know. I love that question. I know mine hands down. And that is plants. Mm. Um, like even if they're fake, like I, like honestly. Addie kills plants. So. Yes, I kill plants. <laughs> All my plants are, are fake. But like once I have our family room done and like my actual furniture pieces purchased, that's going to be my next purchases. It's like fit, fiddle leaf fig trees and stuff mm. like that. I feel like it just makes it look more like lived in. Yeah. Alive. That's a good answer. Mine's actually different. Okay. Mine is for me, I... I can see a decor vision of things and do all this stuff, but until I put family pictures mm. on the wall, I don't feel like my house is finished. That's a good one. Yeah, so like I just put pictures, um, actually I just put the frames, <laughs> um, but I have to get pictures for my family dining room, and after that's done, I, there's a few other things I want to do to it, but that would feel finished yeah. to me. Like lived in and a space that I really, I'm not agitated at, mm -hmm. <laughs> if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes it feel homey. Favorite brands of paint and primer to use for walls and trim. So, since this isn't our house, I don't invest in expensive paint. I just don't because it's not necessary. If it was our own house and it was something that I would know would stay that way for years, maybe I would. But I do invest, I mean, I always think it's a good idea to have a good primer because I feel like then you can kind of get away with using cheaper paint if you have a really good primer. Right. So my go-to is Kills. 
all the way. I love Kills Primer. Okay. It's thick. It covers stains. Um, it's very bonding. So that is my simple answer. And then paint. I just buy the cheapest stuff Walmart has. And that's, and that's it. So I'd love to hear from you because I know you've worked with a little bit more like brand. Yes. Brand or paint. So this house too is very different. I'm painting it right now thinking that we're going to stay there a long time. So it's a very different mindset. Mm -hmm. There is my absolute favorite. Now but for different situations. Like my dining room that I do love so much, I used a semi-gloss bare marquee that's like their expensive okay. And one. that's something I will add. I, I always use semi-gloss, always. Yeah. So to wash it off, it's almost impossible. Yeah, so to wash the, off. the house was painted with a flat paint. It was <sighs> bought as a house to be a renter's house. I don't know why anybody in their right mind paint stuff with flat paint on the walls if they have kids because it smudges and like you can see you yeah. can see handprints all kinds of stuff on the wall even if you don't have kids there's no way to clean it and if you try to clean it it only makes it worse it like looks it looks so crazy yeah yeah so um i usually do a summer glass now this is what i was going to comment my dining room is beadboard beadboard mm -hmm. it's beadboard and it's too shiny with oh, this heavy gloss. Okay. So I would have, in retrospect, I'm not going to redo it again now because I'll probably end up tearing that out and mm -hmm. drywalling it, mm -hmm. but I would have used less gloss on a beadboard. It depends on what you're painting. So Zinzer mm -hmm. 123 is my favorite primer. And do you get I it do, at Home Depot? I do. Okay. Um, I use an app actually that I get cash back at Home Depot, okay. and so I get it there. This one's a funny question. So how do you and your husband divide up chores, domestic duties? Is it 50-50? 50-50? <laughs> What's that? Oh my god. No, I think, I think that is also a personal preference because I appreciate his help, but I also was brought up that like you take care of the home as a yeah. wife. And I know that's not everybody's cup of tea, and if that's not your scenario, that's perfectly fine. But like, I just kind of take, is it is it wrong to say I take pride in taking care of my own home? No, I do too. And here's the thing. My husband is amazing. Actually, he has my kids right now at home. Um, if you don't watch my channel, my mom has cancer. That's why I'm up here visiting, and so he kept my kids at home. And he is doing an amazing job of keeping it, but he knows that he will never clean it like I <laughs> clean it. And, um, and he's okay with it because like there's Levi's clean and he's amazing at it and I'm so proud of him and thankful when he does it. But then there's the way I clean it. Yeah. And I just prefer the way I clean it. Yeah. So I prefer Levi to actually um, do what I have if I ever have a list for him. Mm -hmm. um, but there's certain things that he does. Like he always takes out the trash. Mm -hmm. I'll do it. But like when we first married, I was like, hey, this is just one thing I forget to do. It gets full, yeah. then it gets heavy and mm -hmm. stinky. Like if you could just make this your one thing, right? that's awesome. Yeah. And then other than that, I pretty much do. I think that's, that's actually a really good point um, before I go into like how our scenario is. I think that having like communication about it instead of assuming like, oh, he should be doing this or mm -hmm. he should be doing that. And getting frustrated. Yeah, like coming to your agreements on what you do is really, really important. But um, so, Corey is a clean freak, <laughs> a mm -hmm. major clean freak. Um, like through my pregnancies, I get really sick when I get pregnant. My whole first trimester, I get sick. And he would literally clean the house all the time. He mm -hmm. did it like, honestly, especially my first two pregnancies, he did the dishes like every day and oh, like awesome. he doesn't fold laundry but he'll put it through <laughs> that kind of thing and cleans and sweeps and whatever so he is very much like that now I feel like we've kind of had the conversations of like this is what I do and this is what you do and he takes care of the outside he mows like I've never mowed the yard since we've been married um but like there's a lot of times if he's home with the kids I'll come home and like the dishes are at least in a neat pile and things are picked up off the floor that kind of stuff so yeah um yeah, I think like yeah, I think in my mind it's 50-50 to some degree. Yeah, you know I'm and not I was, complaining about. Anything. No, I was gonna say my when I was first married, I had such unrealistic expectations, and that only led to frustration. And I've been married now for six years, and I'm so much happier because if I expect have expectations for myself. And then he does something extra, like Levi's really amazing at folding laundry. I despise laundry. <laughs> despise. It will sit clean in a basket for yeah. years. Yeah. <laughs> like, or 
to like you're just gonna be digging through it. And then yeah. you're like, then you come to the point where you're like, do I rewash it to get the wrinkles out? Yeah. Or like, why do I even have dressers? This is gonna sit here at this And I think having a healthy balance, like I was we were just talking about having a messy house. And I think if I had to guess, I'd say like 50-50. My house is probably 50% of the time clean. And 50% yeah. of the time, it's a wreck. Like, right now, it's not anything perfect. Which you guys see me do cleaning videos. You know what it looks like before it's cleaned up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so, like, I think also just not putting pressure on yourself. And, like, if your house is a mess, it's a mess. I just feel like it makes everybody feel more comfortable whenever things are just normal. And you yeah. don't have expectations and stuff like that. And if anybody on Addie's channel thinks that she's, like, perfect, like... She's not. She is a real person and yeah. she can have a messy house and it's totally cool. It makes me feel like a real person too. So, <laughs> like she went to take a shower. I was like, I'm so sorry. My trash can is overflowing in my bathroom right now. <laughs> she's like, my hair. So yeah. I'm like, um, yeah, so I'm so glad it's like that because yeah. my house is always like that. Since we both ordered from Grove, there's two questions about Grove here. She asked, do you think that the Method Laundry Line does a good job at keeping your clothes from fading? Let's say that method it uh, would be a good one for them not to fade because a lot of times the reason clothing fades is if you're using a laundry detergent with chemicals in it yes it's going to make your clothing fade so like even though they may market it as though it doesn't um i know i don't know if it's still this way but i know at one point in time like um tide had a form of like a crushed glass like a sand almost in it mm. and it's going to make your it's going to wear on your clothes a lot right. faster i'm not saying they do now but i know at one point in time they did and so like i think having a more natural laundry detergent in and of itself is not as going to keep your clothes a lot nicer looking than yes using a harsh chemical yes and i love the way that grows uh, or methods softener mm -hmm. treats my clothes because i don't feel like, like it leaves a film yeah i know exactly what you're talking yeah about. it yeah. feels like the clothes feel like so long story short, no, I don't think that it fades your clothes. And, um, and then if you guys don't know what we're talking about, Grove is a company that we get our cleaning products from and there'll be a link below. You can get a lot of free stuff, but, um, they have a, they have a bunch of different laundry detergents and one of them is called method. And that's what we were talking about. Um, but then somebody asked the question, what is some pro what are your least favorite product from Grove? Least you, favorite. Yeah. I thought that was a good question because I like question. most everything I get from them and I'm trying to think off the top of my head if there was something that I didn't The know. Mrs. Myers Lavender Room Spray, not my favorite. It, like, did it give you a headache or something? Yeah, it's okay. too strong for me. Okay. And it's, you know, some people say, you know, when you come in and you smell that, like, chemical too strong? Mm -hmm. This is the opposite. It's oh, like a, it's like, like a hippie room. Yeah. <laughs> Too floral, like it's too much when uh -huh. I'm in there. But I think that's the only thing that I've ever been like. I'm oh, seriously I don't really like that. trying to think. Mrs. Myers has a um, baking soda paste and a vinegar like gel, and I just feel like I don't I don't know if both of them, but particularly the baking soda one leaves a film, and you have to scrub it off mm. like off of your shower or whatever i remember when so, you used to use that yeah so yeah. i don't think i think that would be but honest to goodness like i'm not lying i love their and everything i've ever gotten from them i do i really love like it. and the grove themselves brand yes i really like yeah. their stuff. it's really cool i use a lot of their like i use their dish soap i use a lot of their stuff so this question was not written down but one of um, my lovely subscribers she's from australia she sent me a message and she asked me like if I grew up doing projects around the house or like how I got into mm -hmm. doing what I did. And yes, my dad has been a contractor since I was born. And so like even the guys in the uh, hardware shops and stuff, like they know who I am like in the area and stuff like that. So I didn't just pick up a tool one day and like, was like, oh, this is how I can do this. That's funny. <laughs> um, I was taught like pretty much everything that I can that I do, or else I call my dad and I'm like, how do I do this? What's the best way to do this? So that's where it came from, my bug of doing my own projects. That's funny. And, and I am kind of the type of person I'm like, oh well, if I mess it up, it's not the end of the world. Yeah. We moved from New York early in our marriage to Michigan. Um, and one of my best friends passed away 
and I really struggled with depression and at the same time my husband uh, got a job that took him away from 4 in the morning to 8 at night and I was all alone and I didn't have a car or anything and to cope with my depression because uh, I didn't know anybody I wasn't visited by anybody like hardly ever I was all alone for many many hours I would watch HGTV <laughs> I would go on the weekends, go to old thrift stores or antique shops, buy the most beat up old things and redo them in my house. Cause it doesn't, like to do those kinds of projects, it does not take a lot of money. No. Like, you could no. do it and make something look really cool for a very little amount of money. And that, in that, I learned to not only appreciate old things and how well they're built, mm -hmm. But I also learned many, many techniques through trial and error, mm -hmm. through throwing stuff away, through yeah. getting contact high of because of spray painting in my <laughs> tiny little apartment with no ventilation. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that is how, and it really like DIY saved my life at that mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. and taught me many valuable things and just took me through a really hard time in my life. Yeah, I agree with that. I like. I think it's a really therapeutic. That's yes. probably the right word. It's really therapeutic to do things like that, and it's not as hard as you think it's going to be, and you don't have to grow up with a dad that's a contractor <laughs> to do things like that, and I think a lot of people, it's just something they don't even think about that they yeah. do. And it's something like, you can redo something and sell it. Like, when I sold that um, huge buffet that mm -hmm. I said for like 500 bucks, that person was so happy that it was only $500. <laughs> anyway, it's a bit so that this video is not like forever, forever. in a day. I'm gonna wrap it up and I don't know if we'll film anything else while she's here, but I'm sure you'll see Lexi again Probably. soon because I know they're coming back in a couple weeks. Yeah. Um, anyways, but thanks a lot for watching you guys and comment, leave lots of comments below. I'm sure you guys will have a lot of stuff to say about stuff we've talked about. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Go subscribe to Lexi's channel and I'll see you in tomorrow's video. Bye.